Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for part two of spiritual gifts and the definitions and everything of the spiritual gifts. Um, so we're going to get right back into it, but we, we thank you for joining and watching these videos. We, we really hope that they're uh, helping you out. So we're going to do a bit of a recap real quick uh, where we ended up on the first part of this, where uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And we'll quickly go through this, and then I'm going to give you a definition of, of each and every one of these. But it says, the manifestation of the Spirit is to give to every man to profit with all, for the, for the greater good of man, basically, is what that means. For one is given by the same Spirit the word of wisdom. Now, I want to stop there. This is where people get hung up, where they go, for, for to one is given. So one means, well, God gave this person that thing, and this person another thing. But that, how about this? Picture this. You're out in a, in, a, in a group setting, let's say, and you're ministering in the streets or you're having, you know, you're in a church setting or a group meeting or something like that. And the Holy Spirit uh, begins to move in, the, in that church setting. Um, let's say we'll just call it a church setting and the Holy Spirit starts to move there because this is where this was uh, really talking about and given. Um, you know, it's for the world, but it, it can also be used in the church. So let's just, you know, pretend, hypothetically speak, that we're talking about a church uh, setting. Now, we have you know, 50 people in this church meeting and the Holy Spirit begins to move. And we think that this means, a lot, of, a lot of Christians believe that, you know, this person over here is given this gift of healing and this person over here is given the gift of prophecy and this person over here is given this. So, you know, the, th the third or fourth person didn't get anything and then every sixth person, you know, God gave them something. That, that's not how this works at all. Um, so imagine you're in this church setting, like I said, and the Holy Spirit starts to move. And there's people there that are open, that believe, that are following God, that are exercising this thing in their life. They've exercised themselves to godliness, and God says, yeah, I can use you. To that one person is given the word of wisdom. Why? For the church or for another person. To another person who's open and that God can use is given the word of knowledge. It's not, I'm going to give a gift to you, and then I'm going to give to you, but I'm not going to give it to you. No, God will use anybody he possibly can. I mean, he, he used a donkey to speak through. So if God's not using you, eh, you know, we got to make sure that we're better than donkeys, I guess. But, you know, if you're in a church setting, God will use you if he can. And to one person's given a word of knowledge. To one person's given a word of wisdom. For one person this, to one person this. So we can't think of it as, as individual to me, but as it, God is moving and he's going to use this person and then he's going to use this person and then he's going to use this person for the greater good of the body, for the greater good of the world, uh, for the greater good of mankind. That's what spiritual gifts are. It's not just this thing that I get to hold on to and to, and to possess. No, it's just literally electricity through a conduit, through a wire. It's going from one place to another place that it was de destined to for. That's all this actually is. But let's read it in that context. For to one is given the self-same kind, basically, by the Spirit, by the, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, another prophecy, another discerning of spirits, another diverse kind of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. Imagine if this was going all going on in a church setting like it was back then. But you rarely see, you know, gifts like tongues and interpretation of tongues and different things like that going on in church anymore. Listen, you know, people say, well, how do you know what's going on in church? Because we spend most of our lives in churches. And we get to see what's going on in each individual church and different things around the world. And you rarely see gifts like this operating anymore. Not because God has changed. Not because he's taken them out of the church. It's because the people have changed. That his, his children have changed. His saints have changed. And they're not trying to exercise themselves in these things. And they're not you know, going after the spiritual activities of the Holy Spirit. This is why we need to get back to this thing and start manifesting the Holy Spirit through our lives again um, wherever we go. And if you're walking down the street and there's a person there and God needs to get a word of wisdom to them to one you is given the word of knowledge and then or a word of wisdom and then you're walking down another part of the street or in another store and there's somebody that needs a word of knowledge well to one to another is given to another person is given the word of knowledge do you, do you see that 
So God can give you a word of wisdom for this person, and then he can give you a word of knowledge for this person, and then you see a person in a wheelchair, you go pray for them, to another, to that person is given the word of wisdom. To that person is given the word of knowledge. To that person is given the gift of healing. Do you see how this works? It's not to this person gets this, this person gets this, and this person. No, that person who the gift was intended for gets the healing, gets the word of wisdom, and gets the word of knowledge. To that person. You, you see how this works? It, God is always for people, and he wants you to be always for people, and he wants to use you for those all people, and so you can be all things to all men. How, if people believe that God only gave them, gave them one spiritual gift, or none at all for that matter, how does Jesus ever say, John chapter 14, 12, where he said, these works that I do, you'll do these works and greater works. How does he expect you to do greater works with, you know, a third as much or half as much or a quarter as much as he received. He can't do it. He can't hold you responsible for something he hasn't equipped you to be, right? So think of it that way, that when it says to one is given this and to one is given this and to another this and to another that, to one person for another person is given the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of healing, because it's always for another person. You got to think of it that way. And then it goes on and says, Verse 11, but all these work that one self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. We covered that in, in the first session. Um, now, here's the thing. Can gifts be imparted? So before we get into the definition of gifts and stuff, I want to I get this right out of the way. Can gifts be imparted? Well, the Bible says in Romans 1.11, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established or encouraged. Okay. Now, we, we see this all the time where we have, uh, you know, anointing services, impartation services, activation services, all these different things. And they're going to come in there and, you know, people are going to say, well, I just need to see this man or woman of God. And they're going to lay my hands on me and I'm going to receive the, the, the spiritual gift that they have. That is not biblical. And we do not see that anywhere in scripture. And then you may be thinking, okay, well, what does this mean? Where Paul said, hey, listen, I'm going to come and part some spiritual gift to you. Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to describe that for you. Verse 12 says, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. Now, get a pen, write this down. The word impart in Romans 1.11 is the Greek word number 3330. And I think it's meta didomi. Okay, that is my terrible interpretation of the Greek, but I think that's pretty close. And it's 3330. And it means to share, to contribute to needs, and to give. It literally means I offer by the way of change so that a change of owner is produced or bestow. So it does not mean he's, he's imparting some thing to you. It means he's sharing, he's contributing, uh, he's, he's offering truth by a way of change. This is exactly what we're doing. So even now, right now, I'm, I'm imparting to you some spiritual gift because I'm trying to impart truth and understanding to you um, and to the body of Christ. So therefore, I'm imparting right now to you. It is not a matter of, you know, you coming to see me, let's say, or Brother Curry or somebody else, and then we're going to give you a gift of healing, or we're going to give you a gift of prophecy or something like that, and then you're going to walk in sort of empty-handed and, and walk out full. That's not how this works. That's not what it's talking about. Now, we'll go back to Romans 1.11, where it says that he may impart to you some spiritual gift. The word gift is the word charisma, and it's 5486 in the Greek, and it means a favor which uh, one receives without merit of his own, a gift of divine grace, the gift of faith, uh, knowledge, and holiness, and virtue. Okay? So someone can help you with faith because faith by comes, comes by hearing the Word of God. So when you hear the truth of the Word of God, then I can actually bestow faith to you in that sense, but it's not me giving you faith, it's me... Um, giving you the teaching and the understanding so your faith that's in you already arises and grows. That's what it's all about. And then it says that it's, it's without any merit of your own. So Because it doesn't have anything to do with us. It has to do with the manifestation of the Spirit. So I'm giving you knowledge and I can teach you, you know, holiness and virtue. That's what this is talking about, a gift. It, it, notice how it says gift, but it doesn't mention any of the 12 gifts or the nine gifts of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It doesn't say, I've, I've come to you to impart a spiritual gift like healing, um, deliverance, um, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It doesn't say that. Otherwise, it would gift would be described as those things, and it doesn't say that. Now, 
The word impart is only used two times in the New Testament, and it has exactly the same meaning. Number one is Luke 3.11, and it says, He answered and said unto them, He that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none, and he that has food or meat, let him do likewise. So it's imparting what? It's not imparting some sort of spiritual thing. It was imparting a physical thing, like a coat or food or something of that nature, where you have an abundance of this thing, so you can impart to these people this thing. But it's not talking about you know one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not talking about that. Then the other example, of course, is what we just read, Romans 1.11, For I long to see you, that I may, be, it may impart unto you some spiritual gift, that the end you may be established or encouraged imparted so that was the word apart only two times in scripture and it doesn't mean a a you know i'm imparting by laying hands on you it actually meant i'm giving you something i'm coming to give you knowledge i'm giving you truth i'll give you food we'll give you you know if i have two coats i'll give you another coat that's what this is talking about right it's talking about physical things not not a spiritual thing now the word imparted is used once in the new testament and it's first thessalonians 2 8 so being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were so dear to us. So what are you saying? I'm willing to give of myself. I'm willing to give you my own soul if I could. I'm going to pour out everything I can to you. Why? Because you were so dear to us that I've come to impart my love. Uh, I've come to impart my understanding. I've come to impart maybe some, some gifts that I've brought with me. This is what this is talking about. It's not talking about some impartation service where we all line up and I just go along and lay my hands on you um, so you get the gifts that I have. Beloved, you have the gifts that I have. And you have the gift, which is in, which is the Holy Spirit. And all the gifts are in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I can't impart anything to you except really uh, two things. Okay, and we'll get into that. One, the Holy Spirit itself, the gift. And we'll get into that. But the other side of that is just a physical thing, like like we said, food or coats or or you know money or some truth or some love or some mercy or some some forgiveness. I can impart those things to you, but there's nothing in the Bible that says I can impart to you uh, some spiritual gift that God has given me because He hasn't given it to you. Well, you know what? The Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. So if He gave me something that He didn't give you. Guess what? That would make him a respecter of persons. God, the truth is, God gives us all the same thing. With what we do with it is the, the story behind that. If somebody chooses to walk in their faith, develop their faith, and walk out the things of God, and another person doesn't, it doesn't mean that God hasn't given them the same thing. They utilize what God gave them. That's the truth, okay? Now, we're going to go... Um, well, we're going to look at a couple more things here. Um, I wrote down here, if, if you already have it all, what can I impart to you? You have the same thing I have, but I can give you a thing. I can impart or share, contribute, bestow, give you knowledge, truth, encouragement, and faith becomes faith comes by hearing the word of God, like I said, um, and uh, which is Romans 10, 17, by the way. Uh, I, can give, I can impart love, mercy, kindness. I can impart to you truth that causes already what's inside of you to flourish, to come alive in you. So I'm imparting to you something now, and we do these videos, like I said before, because we're imparting some truth that will hopefully, um, you know, cause you to rise up for Christ. Now, as far as activation services go, listen, the day you received the Holy Spirit, the day you got saved, you were activated. You just didn't have the knowledge of the activation. So coming into an activation services where I'm going to turn on some switch that's inside of you is not biblical. Jesus never said, come and I'm going to activate you. He filled pe The people got filled with the Holy Spirit. He gave them authority and that's what activated them. But you have the authority of God. If you're, if you're a Christian, you have the authority of God. You have the ability of God in you. That is your activation. Not some man or woman laying their hand on you. Um, so now you're activated. That is not true. That's seeking man and what man has, not seeking God for and, and what he has. You have the same thing as, as Jesus did. And, and you know, he, Jesus was activated, if you will, the moment he received the Holy Spirit. And that's when he went into the ministry. And it's just, why, was, why would it be any different than us as it was for Jesus? Okay, Jesus says that he that he's as he is, so are you in this world. It's exactly the same thing, but we just have to believe that. First Timothy four fourteen says, "Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given 
the, by the, pros, the prophecy with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Okay? Neglect not the gift, the gift, not a gift. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given the, by, the, by prophecy and by the laying on of hands. So this is what I meant when I said there's one thing that we can give you by laying on of hands. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is what we know as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Not a gift. The gift where all the gifts live, all the gifts reside. They're all in him. So that's 1 Timothy uh, 4.14. 2 Timothy 1.6, if I can flip my page here, says, Wherefore I put thee, you, Timothy, in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which was in you by the putting on of my hand. So what's he saying? I know what's in you because I put my hands on you, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that is the gift. He didn't say, wherefore, I put you in remembrance to stir up a gift of God, which was put into you by the laying on of my hands. It doesn't say that. It says the gift, which is what? The Holy Spirit. Never do we see a gift transferred by the laying on of hands. And yet we have church services all the time that say, well, you know, I got the gift from this person. I got the gift of healing from this person. I, I sought this person out and they gave me the gift of healing. It's not biblical, not biblical whatsoever. We see Paul here saying, I gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit. We can transfer that Holy Spirit in the sense of we can, we can ask God, we can agree together and you can get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is different than getting the, the spirit um, at salvation. Okay. There's, there's, it's, it can be two separate events. Sometimes it can happen at the same time. Um, I guess that's what we call radical salvation, but sometimes it happens at a different time. But he's not saying I'm giving you a gift. He's saying I'm giving you the gift of the Holy Spirit by the laying on of my hands. Acts 8.18 And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Not a gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. So they didn't see that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the gift of healing was given. No, the gift of the Holy Ghost was given by the laying on of hands. This is scriptural. You go, I'm just reading scripture here. Acts 2, 38 through 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not a gift, the gift. Of the Holy Spirit. You have to get that in your mind. Get away from a gift to the gift because in the gift all the gifts reside. Then he says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord shall call. Well, has the Lord called you? Yes, he has because you've answered the call. You're a Christian. So the gift is for you because it's a promise, not a gift, the gift. It, this changes everything, guys. I hope you understand this. Acts 8, 14 through 20. Listen, before we get there, I had a, a, a real misunderstanding of Scripture, um, of, of spiritual gifts, really, and Scripture, too, uh, for the first 17 years of my Christian walk. I had no idea what spiritual gifts were. I couldn't even begin to define them for you, yet we're supposed to operate in them. I, I couldn't... Um, didn't know if I was operating them. I didn't know what spiritual gift I had. I didn't know if I had one, two, none. Um, most days I probably believed I had none because I didn't see God working through my life because religion really has God not working through your life because religion really you know, stymies the Holy Spirit in your life. But I remember trying to figure it out. God, what is my spiritual gift? I remember filling out um, you know, questionnaires and things like that, trying to figure out what my spiritual gift is. Um, I never figured it out because I didn't have the truth. But once I found out the truth, I found out that I have the gift and in the gift are the gifts, right? So that's what changed for me, guys. It, it, and this is why I'm so um, strong in, in trying to get the word of God out because uh, it really uh, threw me for a loop for a long, long time and, and trying to figure out who I was in Christ. Um, yet I had all the stuff inside me already. But it says, uh, Acts eight fourteen through 20. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent down Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might right receive the Holy Ghost. For as of yet it was not fallen on none of them, they were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which shows us that the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, can be and usually is a separate instance than the receiving the Lord as your Savior. 
Now, again, it can happen at the exact same time, but usually what happens is you, the person gets saved and then they get some knowledge, they get prayed for, or they ask God for the gift themselves. Listen, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It, it's biblical that they can, but it's not biblical that they have to. Nowhere in there does it say that they have to. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by just going to God because the Bible says that you know God is the giver of gifts. You know what, what Father gives a child a stone when they ask for bread and all that stuff. And then it says, so how much more will the Holy Spirit pour out, or how much will God, your Father, uh, pour out the Holy Spirit to them who ask? So all you have to do is ask, and then you believe that you received it, and you'll receive it, which goes right into Mark chapter 11. The whole Bible fits together perfectly, but you do not need a man to, to or a woman of God to lay their hands on you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, can you? Yes. There's lots of instances, and it's happening uh, really a lot of times around the world right now, where people are having baptism of the Holy Spirit services missing, uh, or ha happening because the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been missing in the church, which is where you get your power from, according to Acts 1.8. You see? Now, I, I get ramped up and I get excited about this stuff because... Um, this is where I was, and now I'm walking in this truth, and it really changes things. But, and then it goes on and says, uh, verse 17, And they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So again, not a gift, but the gift of the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands. So it is biblical, but it's not mandatory. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered the money. Over and over and over again, we've seen by the laying on of hands, the Holy Gift was, uh, Holy Ghost was given. We don't see by the laying on of hands, a gift was given. We see the gift. And I keep hitting that and I'm going to keep hitting that. Uh, saying, give me, uh, then he said, then, then Simon said, give me this power, also give me this power that whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So he was getting it. Uh, and, you know, he, he didn't have the right motives because he was trying to buy it. But he even saw that the Holy Ghost was given through the laying on of hands, which is where the power resides, which is where the gifts reside. Not a gift. He did not say, hey, listen, give me the gift of healing and I'll pay you money. He said, give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Or give me this power that I can lay my hands on these people and I'll try to buy it from you. This just proves. Well, I'll read it right here and then we'll, we'll end this session here. Verse 20, but Peter answering Simon saying, hey, listen, I want to buy this power from you that I can give the Holy Spirit out to people as well. Peter said unto him, your money perish with you because you th had thought that the gift of God, not a gift of God again, the gift of God may be purchased with money. So when people think, hey, come down up front, um, you know, put your money in the hat over here and God's going to give you a spiritual gift. This is what God thinks about it. Listen, your money will perish with you because you thought you could buy God. And yet you have preachers all over the place saying, hey, come down here, put some money in my hand, put some money in the hat, sow into this church and God will give you your healing. Or, or tell evangelists, sow into this ministry and God will give you your healing. Beloved, you cannot buy God. This says it right here. And God says to those pastors, to those preachers, to those evangelists that are trying to get people's money so that God can move through them, God is saying to you to this day, your money will perish with you because the gift of God cannot be bought. That is still today, okay? So get that in you, preachers, evangelists, whatever. The, the gift of God cannot be bought by money. A gift from God, any gift from God, God himself cannot be bought. And this, is, in this scripture here, is what God thinks about it. So God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, uh, we'll be looking into what the gifts are, what the gifts, gifts aren't, and then we're going to go into the definitions. So this will probably be at least a four-part series, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, God bless you. We'll see you soon.